We ended chapter 34 with Rogo being at the plant after having talked with Julie. We're going to do the exact opposite of that in chapter 35. There are two settings in this chapter. We start at the plant. We close at home with Alex having a conversation with Julie. The important kind of novel area that gets uncovered in both those conversations are discussions of past scientists and past philosophers. And they get brought up in a pretty interesting way. Um, Ralph Nakamura, as we begin around page 288, with Ralph saying, hey, did you know I was a chemistry uh, major undergrad? And he actually goes into a description of Mendeleev, who was the Russian scientist, who was the first to put forward a concept of the periodic table that is the precursor of today's periodic table. There were many people vying for this at the time. And what Ralph does is he talks about all the different ways that the data could be organized, all the different challenges in organizing that data. And then he talks about how valuable it was as a predictive tool, that by showing that this was the way that nature organized itself, that we could predict and anticipate where elements should be that had not yet been identified. This goes to a broader conversation about data management, and it talks about how valuable data management could be. Rogo pushes back a little saying, well, what's the point of all that if I don't have my goal clearly identified? My favorite quote through this is actually in relation to Mendeleev's work. He says, his classification gave him the ability to predict their weight and other properties. What's interesting is the chapter, as mentioned before, closes at home with Julie Rogo, and again, she brings up another famous philosopher, this one who we've been experiencing through the whole book, Socrates. And she points out that she had spent the day at the library and Rogo says, oh, tell me what you learned. And she says that Socrates actually hadn't written anything, that all of the lessons of Socrates come to the modern world through the writings of his most famous student, Plato. So it's a chapter about philosophers, again, as our author Goldrat had done in chapter 34. In chapter 35, we find him going for some pretty heavy topics. Uh, and when you read summaries of this chapter, it's hard to do it justice. This feels like the kind of conversation as you read it th that is had in a conference room with people getting really excited uh, and a lot of note taking being done but just picturing how it would happen with a, a modern team with different linguistic and different, uh, or la different language and different educational backgrounds, it's hard to see all these concepts really being conveyed effectively. Um, it actually feels more like something that should be discussed at a coffee house or maybe at a bar over a few beers. Same tr is true for the conversation with Julie and that actually is happening in the evening as they prepare for a family dinner. So again, big topics coming here as we approach the end of the book, um, they really do a lot to further the concept of how do you handle large complex situations when you don't have clear goals assigned to you yet, and how even when you have this luxury of time that, jo that, gold, uh, that uh, Rogo has here, Rogo, again, Rogo has been given three months here to prepare for his next job, and he's able to make use of his own team to do this thought exercise and challenge them to help him come up with how he should pursue the new job. So he's got this luxury and yet it all boils down to you need a goal in order to understand the system. And then once you understand the system, you can under, understand the constraints. So it's really a very meta interpretation. And what I think the author is trying to do here is similar to the adventure that we had in chapters one through seven before we really understood what constraints were and how vital they were to improving the output of the plant. It's a great chapter. You'll love reading it. You'll love listening to it if you go uh, buy the book on tape or uh, download it on Audible or somewhere else. Because any day that you get the chance to take the theory of constraints and apply it to your own life and the world around you is a day you get to make the world a little bit better. <laughs>